In this, the last lecture in section 1.5, we will look at free energy and equilibrium. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to predict the position of equilibrium from the delta G naught value. So in the final part of section 1.5, we're going to go back to where we started in which I said that a feasible reaction will tend towards the products rather than the reactants. And in the case of reversible reactions where you get an equilibrium between the reactants and the products, so this means that uh, if delta G is negative, then at equilibrium you will have more product, a greater concentration of product than reactant. And if delta G is positive, it's not that the reaction won't happen at all, some reactants will get converted into products, but at equilibrium, the concentration of reactants will be far greater than the concentration of products. The exact definition is that for a reversible reaction, the reaction will proceed until the composition is reached when delta G equals zero. Now there's three different situations you can get. So in each graph, on the left hand side we start off with pure reactant and on the right hand side we've got pure product. So let's look at this first graph here. So the products have far less free energy than the reactants. So going from reactants to products we see that the value of delta G naught is negative. We've lost free energy which means because delta G is negative, the reaction will be feasible. Now, because of a reversible reaction, we're not in a situation where all the reactants turn into products. We want to find the spot here where delta G equals zero. So that's when G stops changing. And G stops changing at this point here, this turning point here. So that will be the equilibrium position where most of the reactants are turned into products, but not them all. So, at the equilibrium, the concentration of products will be far greater than the concentration of reactants, and that will be reflected in the equilibrium constant. So your equilibrium constant will be greater than one, in many cases far greater than one. So you have to get this connection in your head between the delta G value and the K value. Let's look at the next situation, where the products have more free energy than the reactants. So delta G for this reaction is positive. So the reaction is not feasible. But because it's an equilibrium, that does not mean it will not proceed at all. It will proceed until G0 stops changing, uh, G stops changing, which is there. So it stops at a concentration where, a point where you have a high concentration of reactants and not very many products. So at equilibrium the concentration of reactants is greater than the concentration of products which means that the equilibrium constant for this equation will be less than one. So again get the relationship between delta G is positive so you have a very small equilibrium constant. And then just for completeness we include the situation where there's reactants and the products have the exact same free energy. So delta G naught is zero. So the reaction will proceed until we get to this point here, an exactly 50-50 mixture of reactants and products. So concentration of reactants equals the concentration of products and value of K would be one. But this is a very unusual situation. On the whole, will either be this situation here or this situation here. So it's important that you can look at that graph and realise that delta G is negative, delta G naught is negative, that is the equilibrium position, products are greater than reactants so your K value will be greater than one. So just to finish off, here's something that could appear in the exam question. So it gives you a reversible reaction P plus Q reacting to give R plus S. It says that 298K, 
The equilibrium constant for this reaction is 1.2 times 10 to the 10. Okay. Comment on the delta G naught value. So, very big equilibrium constant. I remember our equilibrium constant is a concentration of products, which in this case is R and S, over the concentration of the reactants, in this case P and Q. Very big number, so we've got a high concentration of products, low concentration of reactants. So that means that the delta G value, delta G naught value, will be negative, meaning this equilibrium reaction is feasible. So by now you should be able to predict the position of equilibrium from the delta G naught value.